Hey there, I'm Joe, and welcome to my channel. Players prefer to keep track their higher scores and better equipment in the game. Games are getting longer and longer. Save button is one of the most essential way to saving the player's settings and data. This week, we are taking a look at how to save and load data in your game. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, we will create one UI toggle and keep track of the music setting. We will try it out by setting the music toggle to on or off. Unity will save our settings even we end the play session and start a new play session. Second, we will try to save and load the coins and the diamonds in our game. I will introduce player paths in the middle of this episode. Finally, we can save and load other data such as player position easily. We will understand how to store simple settings and variables values in Unity. In this series, we will introduce four methods to save and load data in Unity. Player paths, civilization, JSON, and XML. Each method has their unique advantages and disadvantages. Each episode, we will focus on one method. This series is inspired by Anthony Uccello. He posts one incredible unit blog about save and load a game in Unity. And he set one 3D shooting game as an example. If you are curious about this unit blog, just go ahead and check it out. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can download a starting project or completed project from my Google Drive. Also, I have uploaded all of the assets on my GitHub. Okay, let's get into it. Now let's just take a couple of seconds and see how this UI canvas is achieved. The UI scale mode is scale with screen size, and its reference resolution is 1920 plus 1080. There are two child game objects, and this UI canvas, the first group focuses on the player's coins and diamonds, which are mated by UI text and UI image. The second group that is called game menu. All of the game menu UI elements are created inside this game object. First, select the game menu game object. Go to UI. Select the UI image. Drag and drop one sprite to source image. You can drag the handles or the edges of the rectangle to resize it around a specified element. Then create one UI text and import the text content. Finally, right-click on the BGM toggle background game object. Go to UI and select the UI toggle. Resize his size and delete the label game object because we have the text content now. In order to see clearly, we can enlarge the background image and drag one new sprite inside the source image. Also, you can click the preserve aspects, making sure this image would preserve its sprite aspect ratio. If you want, you can change the checkmark sprite as well. We can run our scene and look at the game view. We can change the music setting, even if there is no music on here. We need an empty game object called Game Manager, which will hold a script Game Manager that will take care of everything. Create another C# -sharp script called Game Menu. Our UI canvas has this Game Menu script attached to it. The main reason why I create two scripts instead of only one is that we want our Game Manager scripts control the main stuff such like the game status, player's data, and Game Menu script will only focus on the Game Menu part such as the Button Event Listener functions and Toggle Event. These two functions work together and will be easy to read. If you are not already aware, we are going to make this Game Manager a singleton. A singleton is a design pattern that restrains us to having one single instance of an object. If another object in our course needs some data from that object, we call upon the singleton instance to refer to it. Singleton are incredibly useful for getting access to classes that you know you are only going to have one instance of. Back to Unity, when we press the escape button during game play, our game will be paused and the game menu will appear. When we press the escape button again, the game menu UI group will disappear and resume the game. Inside the game menu script, create one new image variable called game menu image to hold a reference to the UI image component on our UI image game object. We have another boolean variable that is called is paused. Really straightforward when the boolean variable is true, which means our game has stopped. Otherwise, the boolean variable is false and we can play our game. At the beginning of the game, we set the game menu game object set active to be false. Inside the update function, if we press the escape button inside the query braces, if is paused is equal to be true, 
which means our game current status is paused. After we press the button, we want to resume the game. Otherwise, we want to pause the game. Then, we create two functions called resume and pause. Inside the resume function, we want our game menu group set active to be false. We can set the time scale to 1. The time will pass as fast as real time. Also, we want to set the boolean variable value is paused to be true. Likewise, inside the pause function, we want the game menu set active to be true, but the time scale should be 0, and the boolean variable is paused to be true. Declaring the resume function as public means that it can be accessed from outside button's event listener. Bend to Unity and drag the game menu game object inside the game menu script. Now we can use the escape button to open and close the game menu. We want to display dynamically the coins and the diamonds on the upper left corner because currently these UI tags are imported by their UI tags content instead of the real data from the player. Bend to Visual Studio, inside the game manager script, we have two public integer type variables that is called coins and diamonds. Then create two new text variables called coin text and diamond text to hold a reference to the UI text component on our UI text game objects. Inside the update function, coin text text is equal to coins to string. To string can convert an integer type variables into string type. Bend to Unity and drag the UI text into here. We can run our things and look at the game view. Unity can save your work by dragging the variable's name and changing this variable's value. Check the result. Cool. Now we want to increase the coins or diamonds after picking up items. For each pickable item, I have prepared as a prefab. Each item has attached one script called pickable item. Inside the onTrigger enter 2D function, if this item is coins, each coin will increase 10 points. We can use the singleton patterns to get access of any public variables from other scripts. When we pick up the diamonds, we want to increase 5 points each time. When we press the play button, our player can pick up each item and increase the corresponding bonus each time. As fun as that game was, I might have been a little dry without music. We have set up the music toggle. And we want to set the BGM toggle on or off and save our music settings even we exit the play mode in Unity. Let's declare one toggle type variable called BGM toggle. This variable represents the toggle game object on the game menu. We have another audio source variable that is called BGM source. These variables will keep track of the toggle and the audio source objects. We will add component and search for audio source on UI canvas. The audio source place bank and audio clip in the scene. Drag and drop our music into audio clip. Also, don't forget to drag the toggle game object on here. Bend to game manuscript. Let's create one function called BGM toggle button. This function will be triggered when we press the toggle. We can control the music turn on or turn off by clicking its on button. This button can return or set whether the toggle is on or not. If the BGM toggle dot is on is equal to be true, which means we should open the music under these settings. Otherwise, the music turn off. In this episode, we use player props to save and load settings or data in Unity. Player props store and access player preferences between game sections. This is a special caching system to keep track of simple settings for the player between game section. PlayerPrefs.setInt can set the value of the preferences identified by key. PlayerPrefs.getInt returns the value corresponding to the key in the preferences fields if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it will return the default value and default value is zero. If we want to remove all keys and values from the preferences, we can use playerprefs.delete all. I have to mention on here, the string type parameter key can be created randomly or customized by yourself, such as the A, B, C, and so on. The most direct way to name the key is use its relative name, just easy to read. The key looks like the page number and the value looks like the information content. 
we can use one unique page to search for what information you want. Then to our editor, we can use playerpress.setInt, the key that is called BGM. The value I set to 1. If we find the key and the value is 1, which means our BGMs should turn on. Otherwise, we can set the playerpress.setInt BGM to 0. We can pause debug.log to check the message on console view first. Then to Unity and select the toggle game object. Press the Event Listener Plus button. Drag the Canvas game object over the object field in the on value change section. We need to select the callback function BGM toggle button. When we turn on the music setting, the console window message display 1. When we turn the music off, the value returns 0. Nice! Inside the game menu script, we create a new function called BGM Manager. If the playerpress.getInt BGM is equal to 1, which means our music turned on, we want to display the check mark on the screen. Additional, play the audio source. Otherwise, if the value is equal to 0, we want to disable the audio source component and turn off the check mark. Finally, don't forget to call these functions inside the update. To access the audio source, we have to get the audio source component in star function. Now we have got things set up to keep track of the music settings. Press the play button and try it out. Change the BGM toggle to on or off. Then ending the play session and starting a new play session. Our music setting is mute because the value is turned into zero. If we set the BGM toggle to on and try it again, the value has turned into one and our Unity has already saved our setting. Now let's complete our save and load buttons. Create two functions called save button and load button. Select off the buttons and press the Event Listener Plus buttons. Drag the Canvas Game Object over the Object field in the On View Change section. Each menu button has their unique callback function. We create two functions called Save by Player Pref, Load by Player Pref. When we press the Save or Load button, we will call one of functions. When we press the Load button, we want to resume the game as soon as possible. We can also use playerpref.setInt to save the coins and demos variables value, the key we call capital C coins. The value can be accessed from the singleton pattern gamemanager.instance.coins. Likewise, the key for saving demos that is called demos, and the value we can say gamemanager.instance.demos. Inside the load functions, we want to assign the saving data back to our game manager script. We can use the key capital C coins to get access of the saving data. Then assign this variable to game manager dot instance dot coins. Likewise, we can use the key to find the single variables values and assign this value to integer type variables demos. In order to avoid errors and make your code more logic, we can add if playerpref.hasKey. Playerpref.hasKey returns true if key exists in the preferences. If you only have one line underneath if statement, you don't need the query braces, which is cool. Cleans up. If you go back into Unity and run our worsting, now we have received 30 coins and 10 demos. When we press the save buttons and resume the game, our current coins has 50 and the diamond's number is 35. When we press the load button, we can return to our previous status and still have 30 coins and 10 diamonds. Perfect. Finally, we want to save our player current position as well. We can use the same way by using player path. Go to our player game object. We have attached one script called player movement. We declare two public flow type variables called player position x, player position y. 
Inside the game menu script, we need to get access of the player movement variable. We use find object of type. Inside C functions, player path dot set float. The key that is called player position x. The value should be the player game object transform dot position dot x. We set the player game object transform component position x value to the key. Inside low functions, if player path has the key called capital P player position x. We want to assign the saving data to the player dot player position x. Finally, we can say player dot transform dot position is equal to the vector two player dot player position x and player dot position y. Save the script and switch back. After we pick up several items. Then press the save button. Unity has saved our player position. After several seconds, once we press the load button, our player will appear on the previous position with the correct coins and diamonds UI display. As long as you did not press the save button again, each time you will appear on this position after pressing the load button. Super cool! As I said, player props is a special caching system to keep track of simple settings for the player between game sessions. Many people make the mistake of thinking they can use the player prof as a safe game system as well. But it's a bad idea. This should only be used for keeping track of simple things like graphics, option settings, login information, or other basic user-relative data. Imagine we have one inventory system. If we use the player props to save each item, we have to remember each key which waste of time and performances. Usually, all of the player settings and data will be saved into one field. For keep track of game saves, we will want to use serialization. In the next video, we will talk about another three key concepts to saving in Unity. Serialization, JSON, and XML. Hopefully, you can see a way they will be helpful for you in your project. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, be sure to hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, if you are interested in more Unity tutorials, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.